I'm gonna show you how to make the Makerspace logo, but I wanna point out that in order to really follow and understand and, and be able to utilize some of the tips and tricks I'm gonna show you, you really need to first go through some of the basic training um, that's offered by Onshape. And so these are available. Um, you can find them um, by clicking on the Learning Center up here, and then it'll open up another page that has a lot of different types of training. Um, go to the self-paced courses. There's a lot of other options. Um, and then you'll really need to go through the first one, navigating on shape, introduction to sketching, and part design using uh, part studios. And really this multi-part uh, part studios doesn't uh, hurt either to have experience with. But definitely do that before um, you do this video tutorial. So here is the Makerspace logo. Um, I'm gonna show you how I mirrored half of the M through this right plane here. And the reason why is that there was symmetry. So you can see that there, the M logo is symmetric through that front pl the right plane. And so if anytime you have symmetry like that, it's a good idea to try to use the mirror feature and that just saves you time and you have to have less entities uh, to sketch out. Uh, the other part of this sketch I'll show you here real quickly is shown here and you can see as I mentioned I essentially uh, sketched up half of the M and then as I was talking about before I mirrored it through the, the, the right plane here. I'll go through some steps on why I did it this way um, but I just want to point out here is that there are only a f few dimensions that are dictating the shape of the M. Uh, so there's one two, three, four dimensions, and that's the minimum set of dimensions that are needed in order to specify everything. So as an example, if I wanted to make the thickness of the legs um, thicker, I would change that dimension to nine, and then I just it updates everything, and because of the way that it was put together with the mirroring, um, it updates everything right away. And so it's very fast to be able to go in, let's say I want to change this to, let's say, seven millimeters, that it will update just that one dimension updates everything right away. Okay, so I'll step through some basic concepts here, just starting with a blank uh, part file. And you can kind of see where, as I mentioned, where we're going with it is this first step is to really generate this sketch, which has a bunch of hidden lines. Um, so that's where we're going to be going. But I first want to just outline some and explain some very basic concepts. So I'm going to create a sketch, and as I did for the Makerspace logo, I'm just going to start out here, and I'm going to create this rectangle. And I can convert these to hidden lines, and the distinction between hidden lines um, and non-hidden lines are that the hidden lines are not really used to generate any geometry, actual extrusions or anything like that. You can't use them. They're really just reference lines is another word for them. So these are just lines that you can use for reference, and I think it will make uh, become clear after you've done it a little while how it be, can be very useful to use these hidden or reference lines. Um, you can also use other reference geometry like reference planes and others that we probably won't go, in the, go through in this activity, but it's a useful technique as well. All right, so one way I should say that you could create uh, the Makerspace logo is just to start sketching it out. Um, so I've done a little bit more than that now with making this uh, rectangle, but let's just say I started sketching it out. So I'm going to just sketch out the M. I'm going to do the, the big uh, parts of the, the M logo here. And then I could just dimension each of these. So I'd have to sit through and dimension each of them, 17. And then I'd have to dimension this one. and so on and so on. You can see right away by using that rectangle that I've already constrained the shape in some way, so that's kind of simplified my process, but I'm still doing a slow process by dimensioning every single one of the circles. Um, and so you could go on and do this for the rest of the circles. I think if you've already used uh, constraints before, you've seen the advantages of constraints, and the advantage is that you can basically capture some of the design intent into the actual CAD model. So as an example, in this case, we want all of these circles to have the same diameter. 
So we highlight all four of them and then hit the constraint equal. So now we've reduced the number of dimensions we need down to just one for these outer circles. And as I change this one dimension now, let's say I change it to 14, they all update and change accordingly. So that's very useful. Um, and so you could do the same thing um, with these inner circles. So I'm going to create the inner circles of the M and then I'm going to make those hidden too. I'm actually going to make all of it hidden so I can highlight them all and then make them all hidden. Um, and then I need to uh, again go back and make these equal. Okay, so now I need to dimension that inner circle too. So I can either dimension it like this or I can uh, dimension the distance between or the difference in the diameter of these two, uh, I guess the difference in the radius between these two. So it, it just depends on what you want to do and you really want to kind of capture your design intent, whatever you intend to be um, the case. Like if you're more interested in this inner diameter, then you should uh, dimension it as a diameter. If you're more interested in the difference between those radii, then you should uh, measure it or m dimension it the way that I've done it right here. Okay, you can see here that these lines are all blue. And the reason why is that I have not constrained the overall shape of this rectangle. Um, and so one thing I can do to simplify it a little bit more is I can highlight these four legs and I can say that they should all be equal. So essentially making it as a square. Okay, it's still blue, which means that it's not constrained. And that means I still am missing a dimension in order to specify what the shape should be. So I can come here and I can make this, let's say 40. And now they've all turned black, so it's fully constrained. So if I click on this corner, you can't move anything. And that's always a good test, is it just try to pull around on points and lines, and uh, as I did before, and see which way the model will move. Um, but right now, it's fully constrained, and so you cannot move it at all. All right, so the next uh, step is to add a couple more lines here. So I'm going to add this line coming down from there to there. And it's already went automatically as a hidden. And I also have to add this circle in the middle because it also has that same shape. So now is another example of where you can come back. And it's you can see here that they're blue because they're not they've not been cons they've not been specified in terms of their dimension. And so I need to highlight this one and it needs to be the same as that one. And I just do equal and now it's black. And same thing with this inner one. And now it's black. And I want to turn these to hidden lines for now. So highlight both of them. Oh, it already did it. It was just a little slow. Okay, so that's that. And you can see that all the lines are black. So that means it's fully uh, constrained um, in that dimension, in the dimensions that I've uh, laid out so far. The thing that we want to create are these legs on the M logo. So I'm going to come down here and click on this one and this one and this one and this one. You can see here that that's some uh, some constraints are snapping in. It's it's creating the coincident constraint onto that circle, which is fine. And then the vertical one, you can see them down there and that's fine. You can see them here uh, that this line is that's the constraint there that it's vertical and that point is constrained as coincident. So those are just automatic, which is good. And we actually wanted those, but you have to do, you do have to keep an eye on those because sometimes it adds some constraints you don't want automatically. So I made those hidden lines and now I'm dragging and clicking on this and I'm seeing that, okay, that's not quite doing what I want. So what I want to do is I want what I want. And again, this is capturing the design intent. My intent is that there's symmetry across this uh, vertical center line here. So I highlight all three of those lines um, and I could actually just do it very quickly just by clicking and dragging across the three of those. And then I want to click on the symmetry constraint. So now they're symmetric. Um, the only issue here is that I want to now specify the width. So I'm going to now add a, a width dimension here and I'm going to put it at nine millimeters. 
and everything's black, so we're good. I, if I click on anything, I, I can't move it. So I can't move anything, it's all black, it means it's fully constrained. Um, and then now I wanna add the other leg to the circle. So two lines. Um, I want these, again, to be symmetric, just like we talked about before. So I'm gonna use highlight all three of them, do the symmetric feature. So now they're symmetric. I also want this line to be hidden, and um, I want them to all be parallel. So again, I'm just building in the design intent. So something, this is like a case here where something, I must have had a constraint that I didn't necessarily want because they've been constrained in here. And I can see it here, it's, it's this one right here actually. It's, it's saying that that line is tangent to that circle, and that's not what I want. So I'm gonna I cover over it, and then I click on that dimension or that constraint, and I'm just gonna hit delete. That's perfect. That solved that. So you kind of always have to keep an eye on those constraints that pop in. Uh, sometimes you don't want them. It's just kind of the auto feature, and I think you can turn that off. Uh, but a lot of times they're very handy and save you time. All right. So um, so what I want is the thickness of this leg to be the same as the thickness of this leg. And so I could just dimension it like this. I could add another dimension and say, okay, I want this and I want it to be nine. And that does it. Uh, the problem is now I've got more dimensions than I really need. I really want that minimum set. Otherwise I'm gonna have to change them all every time. And I didn't capture the design intent. And my intent is that I want those legs to have the same uh, thickness. So one way to do it is to come down here and just make a hidden line between um, between both sides of the leg. And then I would do the same thing on this leg is just connect these two. And again, since they're hidden lines, they don't really matter. They're not gonna drive any geometry right now. And um, what I do is I say this line is the same length as this line. And so now that's it, everything turns black. And we have um, half of the sketch. So let me go that to the, the other sketch I had shown you before and this should have all the features and so this is kind of part one of of the sketch i'm going to change some of the dimensions and make sure that everything's updating properly so if i do like 60 millimeters it updates automatically it uh, has all the shape that i wanted and the and de design intent was captured and it's robust in the sense that it doesn't fail um, when i try to change a dimension obviously there are limits to how big or small you may have some errors at certain points because it won't make physical sense um, but in general, I kind of explore the design space here, and everything seems to be updating fine. Um, all the lines are uh, black, and so that's good. So everything seems to be working. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change this back. And then the next step is to add in the solid lines. And the solid lines are actually going to drive the actual feature generation. So that, that's like the extrusions and other things. The sketch is really good as, as kind of being the skeleton of the CAD model um, that's very well constrained and uh, defined with this minimum set of dimensions that can be easily updated. So I'm going to now go over top the hidden lines and add the actual uh, geometry that I need through lines. And there are a lot of different ways you can make all these shapes. Um, a lot of these are arcs here, so I'm going to just uh, do the arc between these two points. And as I mentioned, there's a lot of different ways you could make these arcs. Um, but I made the arc, it's a solid line, and you can see that it automatically turned black because it's fully constrained to the hidden geometry. So again, you use the hidden geometry as kind of the skeleton and the backbone of, of the CAD, um, and that's why I recommend doing it that way. You don't have to now dimension it. Um, you just kind of click through. Uh, you could do this all at once. You could add all the lines at once. Um, you could add then all the arcs at once, um, but it goes fairly quickly. And you can see they're all turning black right away um, because again, they're linked to that skeleton, the reference geometry. So now I'll go and add some of the arcs. Um, and again, I'm only going to do half of uh, the geometry. And so I do need to add a couple lines here. Let me add. 
I might need to add a hidden line here. And then I'm going to go through here. If I can zoom in, I'm going to add it from there to there. And then I'm going to add another line. This is just kind of the, the slice of the mirrored plane there. And then I need to add these arcs. Okay, and you can see that it are automatically started shading in because it's now saying that I have a closed cur set of curves that can actually make a feature like an extrusion. But I also need to come and add um, these other inner circles. Um, and here I actually, it looks like I have to add the constraint that they're equal. It didn't snap in and recognize it, which is fine. So I come in here, I create the circle. It's, it's blue because it's not constrained. And I could try and kind of match it down there, but you know that's not very accurate, and then it won't update. And so the best way to do it is to click on the blue one, click on this inner hidden line, and hit equal. And then it will uh, be constrained to that shape. So I can hit OK there. Um, and so that's the half of the actual sketch that I need. So the next step is, and you can see here that's kind of what we wanted before. This is what I'm calling part two, which is where you actually add the lines um, to the sketch, the solid lines. So now it's as simple as uh, coming over here and doing an extrusion, and you can hit the extrusion button, and it takes that, that close curve that we've made using the solid lines. Again, it won't recognize anything to do with hidden lines. It's just the solid lines that it uses to make uh, the extrusion. And then I can choose a thickness, let's say 10 millimeters, and that's it. And then simply I come over here and now I want to mirror it. So I come over there, I highlight the extrusion, and then I come up here and look um, for the mirror feature. So these are all the features um, right up here. Um, and you want the feature that is mirror. So sometimes you can kind of hover over it and try to look for it. Um, it's right here. So I can click mirror uh, and you say entities to mirror. And then it's, we want this to be mirrored and then you have to pick the mirror plane, which is this one here. And sometimes you kind of have to click on that. And then it's mirroring through the right plane. You can see that's the right plane. It says right plane there. And then you have some other options um, here. I'm going to just say merge with all. And then that's the Makerspace logo. And again, the real advantage here is that the way that I made it, I have these only this simple set this minimum set of dimensions that are needed in order to specify the shape of the, the M logo. So I can change this to 50 millimeters. Um, I can change the diameter to like 19 millimeters. Uh, I can change the thickness to 10 millimeters. And everything should update automatically. So just quickly, you can change the shape and the look of the Makerspace logo. Um, so go ahead and tweak it the way you want it. Um, and now, once you have the shape, you can save it um, as an STL file. You could save it um, as a, you could create a, a drawing out of it and then save it as a PDF file for the laser cutter. Or you can 3D print the STL file. And you, you can do all kinds of things with it with all the different tools available uh, in a makerspace. I'm going to just show you a couple examples, one for 3D printing, and that one's actually quite straightforward. So if, you're, if you were to want to 3D print this part, you just right click down here on whatever part you want to 3D print. Uh, it needs to be a solid and you say export and then you can pick the defaults you can go in and read about all the different options you have there but I typically just take the defaults and then save it whatever part name you want and that's that um, so that's for 3d printing and then you could print it out on any you know really any 3d printer that takes STL files uh, the next common one that we do here at the Makerspace is to uh, laser cut this. So you might want to just cut out the shape 
um, using wood or plastic or something like that with the laser cutter. So to do that, it's a little bit uh, more involved, not a big deal, but just a couple more steps. So you first need to do the plus sign here and then create a drawing and just say, okay. And then just escape out of all that. So I'm just hitting escape a bunch of times. And then you just highlight all these uh, lines and text and delete them. And then you might have to delete that. And then you just want a blank sheet. And if you're doing a bunch of, uh, bunch of different types of drawings, you might want to just copy this. You could duplicate it and then you know, have it for multiple. Now that you have the blank one, use it for multiple uh, output uh, exports. Um, but here I'm just going to do one and I'm going to, so I hit the insert here, insert view, and then insert there. And then I'm going to do the tutorial final part. And then the most important thing here, just look at your options here is scale and just make sure that's one to one. And then once you've gotten that view, it depends on your planes, the way you've oriented it, uh, which view you'll get first. Uh, but once you have that, it's trying to give me the other views, and I just hit escape. And then that's the view that you want. Sometimes by default, it shows the sketches or other things in there. And so right click on uh, that box there, and you can mess with these settings like show and hide sketches. Like I could show the sketches if I wanted to. Um, and I'm just going to undo that. But that's where if you have sketches that are showing up or other entities that you don't want, you're going to have to tinker around with those options, but it shouldn't take long, and this is what you'll get in the end. Um, so once you have that, similar for, to for 3D printing, you do the right click down here, and then export. And then again, in this case, instead of an STL file, you're doing a PDF. Um, and these are, you can just take all the defaults, you know, where it's going to store it. And then it's exporting it. And then there's your PDF file. So from there, you can open. From here, you can then open it up in Illustrator. Uh, you can change line types. Let's say you, you were to want to you know, have this be rastered or do different things, then you have a vector uh, image here. That's what this is, and you can modify it in Illustrator. Okay, I'm now gonna reflect on what we did in making the logo and just try to generalize on some important concepts that I was trying to introduce. So the first is that you should try to capture your design intent. So we gave the example, I gave the example that you should ensure that one hole is always the same size as the other. And that seems like a simple idea uh, for you making the CAD, um, but that information, if you don't put it in as a constraint, may get lost later on down as other people start to modify your design. So when you're designing something, you want to capture those uh, important features uh, that one hole should be the same as the other or that a dimension should all you know one thickness should be the same as the other thickness and things like that and you do that typically with constraints the second important concept was uh, the topic of making a robust model and that ensures that uh, that's about ensuring that your model doesn't fail when you change uh, dimensions so i've had this many times myself is that i'm creating a cat assembly and i've uh, measured a thickness and i wanted a certain thickness let's say a whole uh, thickness or a whole diameter and then you go back later on and you say, actually, I need to change that. And I mean, to make it a little thicker because I prototyped it and I found out this is a little different than I, I thought. Um, and so you want to be able to just easily change that one dimension and not have to go through and change a bunch of other dimensions. Um, and that's kind of related to what's called parametric modeling, which is where your model is driven by a set of parameters. And that's essentially this minimum set of dimensions and constraints uh, that you need in order to specify the shape of what you're trying to do. Um, but with a robust model is you know your model is robust is when you can change it one dimension and it essentially doesn't fail or if you want to change multiple dimensions and a lot of times with CAD models is that you change one dimension and you get all these red flags that you have all these errors and one way to test that is kind of what I was showing you before is um, as you go along don't do this at the very end but as you go along and are generating your CAD just test out some of the dimensions like basically perturbate around the the different dimensions you have and t test it to see okay if you go up 20 22 go down to 18 you kind of tinker around with your your CAD model uh, to make sure that it's robust and it's able to update properly without giving you errors so I kind of demonstrated that as we went along um, you can do the above that I just mentioned so capturing your design intent and making a robust model you do this through constraints which I just kind of described and showed you hidden lines 
and the features through mirroring. Like as an example, um, mirroring is very handy because it captures again the design intent that it should always be symmetric around that plane in the case of the Makerspace logo. It's also useful uh, features like mirroring and other constraints because it just saves time when you're trying to make edits later on. The most important thing here is just don't do free sketching. You can start out that way. You can just start making the general shape, but then you need to go back and make these important uh, constraints and hidden lines and other things to make sure that you uh, have both captured your design intent and you've created a robust model that can be edited later on.